Oh, welcome to our channel. I'm Eve with the baby's booty. In today's video, we are going to customize tea towels. Tea towels are a very versatile towel that is useful in the kitchen and such a simple task to embroider on. Can you imagine putting a custom tea towel along with a custom oven mitt set? Well, that's what we're going to do today. We are going to create our tea towel with a repositional hoop on our 4x4 machine. It's easy to do, so stay tuned as we go from beginning all the way to our custom tea towel. Our video is going to focus on tea towels. We are going to design and embroider our own tea towels. Now our first tea towel set that we're going to do is going to be on the 4x4 machine. I've decided to incorporate the repositional hoop with this particular tea towel. That will give you another course on how to use the repositional hoop to do a larger design than what your 4x4 machine can do. Let's get started with Sew Up Pro. Now, what we'll do is focus initially here on the design that I already have on the screen. This particular design is perfect for the repositional hoop. Let me explain to you why. Your repositional hoop allows you to expand beyond your 4x4 limitation on your embroidery machine. Because your embroidery machine can only embroider in 4x4 sections, a repositional hoop was created to allow you to break outside of those boundaries. Here is an example of the grid that goes in the 4x4 hoop. I'm sorry, the repositional hoop. So notice here is one 4x4 section here, and then here's another 4x4 section here which overlaps the middle section and then this section here which also overlaps the middle section another 4x4 area so in theory technically 4 times 3 really should be 12 but we can't go outside of these parameters so essentially what you wind up with is 4 inches up and down versus six and almost seven inches not just over three quarters of an inch so six and three quarters inches whenever you put together a design for your repositional hoop to go on your 4x4 machine please understand that this is going to be the largest size that you can go with a 4x4 machine now because your machine can only embroider in four by four sections at a time we have to take a design that's four by six and three quarters and split it into three sections to allow your embroidery machine to be able to embroider an entire design all the way across that is why in a lot of instances when you get an error that tells you that you have to cut sections of your design this is why because you can only do four by four at a time on your machine so you have to cut your design into four inch chunks let me show you in so what pro exactly how that works notice this design again i have each one of these color stops for these letters separated. Now generally when we embroider we want the entire words to uh, stitch out so that you don't have to um, have to keep changing the thread or keep pressing the go button. But notice what happens when I join these threads alright to make all of this green one color stop. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to join threads or control J and what we're going to do is join all adjacent threads of the same color and we'll hit OK well now you have 
two color stops for your embroidery machine. One is green and one is black. Let us try and save this design in this repositional hoop. And I'm gonna go up here and I will do save as, and I'm gonna put it on my desktop and I'm going to name it repo test. Now watch what happens when I hit save. It gives me an error. It's telling me the following color blocks must be cut. It's saying the first color block has to be cut to be saved in this positional hoop. Suggestions for color block splitting. And it gives you some options to split your design. And it's saying this file was not saved. It wasn't saved because you have to cut this design into four inch chunks. So let's hit okay. And now what we'll do is I'm gonna hit the back or undo button and put all my colors back to where it was. What this does is allows this design, although it's a pain in the rear, but you will be able to do each letter and it will split this design into four inch sections to allow it to embroider in four inch chunks, but the entire design will stitch out. So let me show you how this is showing it should be split. Now notice T and repo and ND all fit in this first section. Then when we hit P2 in the green section, well, EA and EPO and TOW and HO and ND, all of that fits in the middle section. And now let's look at the blue section, position three. The T doesn't fit in there, but the rest of it does. And ND and hoop does. So you see there are different ways where this pattern can be chunked into four inch sections if you really wanted to. So I could essentially take all of this here, which we see is definitely in the blue section. I can take O, W, I, N, the, all of this minus the letter T because look, the T is outside of that four inch section. And I can merge all of this and allow it to join into one color stop and then it can stitch all of this out without stopping let's go to the middle section now we remember the t couldn't fit over there so i can take this letter t the ea and the epo and join these letters together and allow this to stitch out in a different section four by four chunk and then I can do the T and the R in the first section. As we see, it definitely fits in the red area. Let me show you how the computer or how the program So What Pro splits this up. So we're going to go up here and we're going to hit Save As. And we're going to do Repo Test again. And notice there's an X here because it said it didn't save it. And look, it says zero kilobytes here. So that lets you know it did not save anything whatsoever. So let's go ahead and hit save. And it says it already exists, but that's just the file name. It's not actually an embroidery design. So we're gonna hit yes and replace it. And now it tells us this positional hoop file has also been saved as individual hoop files with suffixes p1 p2 and p3 you should only edit the original unsplit file what does that mean let's click ok and now it says your sewing order should be pattern one hoop position one pattern two hoop position two and pattern three hoop position three and we'll hit ok I'm going to close Sew It Pro down or minimize it. And we're going to close this out because this all of this has to do with the error that we received because we tried to save the file and all of the stitches were joined and it wasn't going to work. Now over here, and I'm going to drag this to the middle so that you can see it easier. 
here are our files that so what pro has saved now notice this one this is the and it's going to be hard to see and i wish i could zoom in let me see if i can make this bigger all right i made it a little bit bigger so notice this particular one this is the entire embroidery design that i created this is your main file this is the file that is unsplit and you can use it to edit different parts of your design that way you can resave it into its three respective chunks so if you needed to say change this to t towel repo here instead i know that sounds crazy but it was the best i could come up with then you would edit this one and then resave it probably as repo test number one or repo retry whatever the case may be so this is the file you would edit not these three split files all right these three split files are your actual stitch out files now i don't know how well you can see this but the very first one is the tea and the repo as I had mentioned before. So this you would put in the first set of nodules on the repositional hoop. The second file is right here and it is the TOW and then the large letter H. So this is your position number two. Then your position number three is the last of the ELS for towels and the OOP for the hoop and your small in the letters in the middle. So this you would put in the third position of the repositional hoop. So this is how the repositional hoop works and your embroidery machine you would have to actually situate your tea towel sideways in your repositional hoop and we'll do that once I do the actual design that we're going to put on the tea towel now I'm not going to put this one on the tea towel but I wanted to use that with the wording so that you could see exactly how that works now we're going to do it with a design so let's go back into so what pro now in so what pro let's go here and I'm gonna select everything and I'm going to hit delete because that's not what I want. And I'm actually going to put my grid lines back. So we'll go view and we'll go grid lines. Now I want to merge in a design. The design that I want is in my downloads folder. And for these tea towels, what I've decided to do is make them uh, relevant to our upcoming season that way when I do my tea towels they'll be super cute and would possibly sell really quickly because it's going to be relevant to the season so here I have a cute little pumpkin with some vines and leaves around and what I'm going to do is merge in a letter to go with it because this is a corner design so I want the letter to be situated right in here somewhere and ordinarily if I was doing this on my uh, machine without a 4x4 hoop I would have to stitch out the pumpkin first unhoop it and then try and line up that center line and the up and down line where I want my letter A to go and then stitch out the letter A well the repositional hoop helps keep us from having to go through that so I'm going to open here info icon view because I've already opened the letters ahead of time and I am going to pick the letter W. So once I click on the letter W, it populates into uh, my embroidery field for me. So I'm going to close out info icon view and I'm going to move the W up here. I'm going to move it over a little bit and i think that it'll look nice right there so essentially i'm going to be able to embroider outside of my four by four embroidery field so here i'm going to 
show you once I hit P2 that I will be able to fit that W in position number two of the embroidery repositional hoop. Now I won't be able to, like if I slid this over to the middle, let me show you how that would work. So say for instance, I want this in the middle. And then I want to take this W and put it there. So now once I hit P1, notice how the vine goes outside of my 4x4 field. If the first color stop, notice how the first color stop is a vine. It's all attached. So what the machine is wanting to do is so all of this out at one time. You have a 4x4 machine. So here is your 4x4 field. It can't stitch it all out at one time because this part of that vine is over the line. Now there is a way to cut this design and allow it to stitch out along with the W and it come together as one design. But that's a subject for a different video. We don't have time for that in this video today. So we're gonna put this back over here in its respective four by four section and we're gonna move the W back over so that it'll align pretty much where I want it to on the T towel. And that's it. This is how you would take a design and make it fit a repositional hoop by merging other designs in with it. And I actually could even do this. If we select the pumpkin, I can do copy and then I can click off of that and then I can do paste and notice it's a completely different pumpkin right so I can move this over to here and I can reflect it left to right and look that's kind of neat isn't it I've essentially made a completely different design and if I centered the W, it would turn out, you know, pretty cute. A little busy for my taste. But that's another example of something you can do with the repositional hoop. Well, I'm going to hit undo because that's a little bit much for what I want. And we're going to leave it just like this. And I'm going to do save as. And then I'm going to leave it as repo test because I don't want the other thing as an embroidery design. So now it says this positional hoop file has also been saved as hoop files with P1, P2, and P3. But notice now it says pattern one and pattern two. So it pretty much only saved it as two embroidery files. So I'll only have to use the first section and the second section. So we'll click OK. Now what I'm going to do is minimize this and then I'm going to actually save this design and let me show you here is the first one first stop and here is the second stop now we didn't need this one because that was the third of the old file so I'm going to delete that so I'm going to take these two designs and put them on my SE 425 machine and then we'll hoop our tea towel and go ahead and stitch it out. So I'll meet you by the ironing board. I'm here at the ironing board so that you can see uh, the tea towel. I already have it laid out and I also have my center lines and other lines marked on the tea towel with a water soluble marker. So if you see here, my blue lines are already there and here's the center and this is where I want the design to go. And this line down here is for something different. So we're gonna lay this out. And the thing with doing just position one and position two is this center line is for all three positions 
or if you have just something centered or if I had moved it to the center and centered it. Well, I don't have that because I put everything right in this area here. So I'm going to have to kind of guesstimate. And what I think I'm going to do is use this line here, this center area for the center of my design. So this line here is what I'm going to have to put on the center line down the middle of the towel. And let me see if I can lift that and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So again, this is the line I want to use. This is the center of the towel. And I'm going to line that up with the line going down the middle of the towel. And that's pretty much how I'm gonna have to hoop this. And it's kind of hard to show you, but for the most part, that's pretty much where we're going with this. Now I need stabilizer. And let me get this set up first and then I will grab my stabilizer. Now what I'm going to do is use a piece, a thin mesh uh, shear piece of cutaway stabilizer. As a rule of thumb, with cutaway stabilizer, if you're going to wear it, you don't tear it. So this isn't something that we're going to wear, but it is something that's going to be washed repeatedly. So we want to use cutaway stabilizer with that. And just a really lightweight cutaway is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna put the stabilizer on the back and I'm not gonna use any, um, I'm not gonna use any adhesive on it. We're just having a little bit of fun. So we'll just make sure that it's hooped good and tight. So I'm going to, first of all, know that this is going to be facing uh, or attached to the arm of my SE425. And my embroidery design is orientated this way. So the top of the letters are here and the bottom of the letters are here. So this is how I want to um, hoop my project where the letters, the top of the letters are here and the bottom of that letter and the pumpkin is here. So let me turn this, which is this is the correct way to hoop it. So I'm gonna slide this under the bottom. And we're gonna move that over because this is gonna be hooped a little bit different and off center like I mentioned before. And I'm gonna line that grid up with the line on the embroidery. And let me adjust the camera so that you can see this clearly. And I'm gonna bring you closer so that you can see it. And sorry for all the camera adjusting, but I want you to see. All right, so I am again lining this grid up with that line with the center. And now that I have it in the center, I'm going to slide this tea towel over and along with my stabilizer and in sliding it over, I slid it a little too much. So we're gonna come back and what I'm trying to do is find the edge of my hoop while keeping it, keeping the tea towel in the center. So it's off just a little bit, I'm readjusting. And I'm gonna pull the tea towel just a little to get it in the right central location this way. And now I'm going to adjust it that way. by giving it just a little tug. And there I have it in the hoop. And so now we're actually going to go ahead and get that hoop pushed into place if it's not tightened down too tight, which it seems like it is. So I'm gonna loosen it just a little bit by twisting the thumb wheel. And now we're gonna try and push that in again. You shouldn't have a lot of resistance. And then again, it could be because I'm on the ironing board, not on a more rigid surface. And 
look my tea towel is going off center so I'm going to let that ease out since I didn't have it pressed all the way in anyway and I'm going to pull it just a little bit back towards that way to get it back centered and now we're going to put that back in and pop that hoop in place and there our hoop is all right so now i have it hooped do it sound like a drum for the most part yes it does i don't like how loose that is so i'm just gonna tug just a little to get that a little bit tighter and that's not really how we should be hooping by tugging but that's what i'm doing today so this is the center of the tea towel and it's off center because I only have it set to embroider right in this area. And so I want this to be, I want the design to be in the center. And I'm not doing over here on the repositional hoop. So I put it off center so that it will be centered once we embroider it out. Now let's go and put this on the machine. Now that I have my design in the machine, I'm going to pull it up. Here is the pumpkin and here is the W. Now notice how the W is turned. It's turned this way, just like I mentioned. Here are the brackets. So that's facing this way. So the W will be up and down this way and that's exactly what we want. So make sure that when you pull up your design that the letter is turned the way that you want it to stitch out. Now the pumpkin is supposed to come first. So what we're going to do is select the pumpkin and we're going to pull it up. And the first thing it wants to do is the vine. So let's go ahead. And we remember this is position number one because here is one and reason when you're doing your repositional hoop, think about what you're doing because we know the pumpkin is going to be on this side and the letter is going to be in the middle. So logically, even though the machine doesn't say P1, P2, we know P1 is the pumpkin. It's going here. The W is here. So that's going to be P2. So when you're spelling out something and you see your letters on the screen, you know how it's going to be spelled out. So make sure that you're spelling it out and hooping it in accordance to how it's spelled. So let's go ahead and put it in position number one, which are these two nodules here. All right, so I have the green, I have the pumpkin, so we'll go ahead and what I'm going to do is let this stitch out and when it finishes, we'll come back and I'll show you me switching it to the second set of nodules so that we can stitch out the, the W to keep you from having to watch the whole thing stitch. Now that the pumpkin is done, that's the first four inch section. Now we're gonna to move to the second four inch section. So we have to back out of this and go to the second pattern, which is the W. We'll upload that and it's only one color stop. So now that we've loaded the second four inch section, we have to move it to the second four inch section set of clips. So we'll take this off. Move it down to the next set of clips, the two in the middle, and that's it. We'll go ahead, drop the foot, and start sewing.
and now we finished sewing let's take it off and have a look isn't that pretty now because it's in the repositional hoop the way it is it looks like it's off center but let's take it out I'll set that to the side and if we fold it this is what our tea towel will look like now of course we want to get rid of our marks so let's grab the spray bottle with a smidge of vinegar in it And our marks have disappeared. Uh-oh, I forgot to do the stem. I was rushing. But just to show you how it stitches, this is how it's going to turn out. And the tea towel, actually, even without the stem, because I just noticed it, it's gorgeous. I never really was a fan of pumpkin anyways. <laughs> and there you have it. Embroidering tea towels is quite simple to do. There's not a lot to doing it. It can be that one special flair that adds just the right touch at holiday parties or in the kitchen for mom, or maybe even to go along with that oven mitt bake set. All it takes is a simple design, possibly some ribbon, and some excellent tea towels. I put a link in the description below for these simple tea towels that I found on Amazon. As you see, they're pretty generous size. They're 28 by 28. You can actually cut them down into smaller tea towel sizes if you wanted to. Then all you would have to do is hem the raw edges just like the towel already is hemmed. You turn under one quarter of an inch and then turn over another quarter of an inch and then stitch straight down the side and there you have a custom tea towel size how awesome is that that's one of the things i really did like about this particular brand of tea towel because there really there wasn't anything extra to it it was simple it was everything that i needed and then some so i wanted to give you guys a link to show you where i got these and how awesome of a project it was i've had a lot of fun embroidering tea towels well, I've enjoyed doing the tutorial for today. I look forward to seeing pictures of your custom tea towels. And until the next time we see you, happy embroidering. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to view other videos in our tutorial playlist and click here for the next video that you should find helpful thank you